Do you have any idea who this person in black may have been? I thought it was a dream, but in light of what's happened, I suppose it could have been real. This isn't fair. You're still recovering from major surgery. We have to let you rest. Karen, if you're suggesting that someone deliberately altered my IV, the last thing I'm going to get is rest. I don't think anyone is out to harm you. I think someone is trying to make me look incompetent. All right, so maybe you didn't intend to put a person's life in danger. But you opened up Kevin's IV line. You lowered his head, and you waited for someone to come around and correct my mistake. And if they didn't, you would have arrived conveniently to fix it yourself. While pointing the finger at Karen the whole time. Hey, where are the keys to the executive washroom? Did you rip them off? Hey, you know, enough with the accusations. Just back off. Uh, take it easy, Chris. Who's accused whom? I'm sorry. It's just Joe and Karen. They're telling anyone who will listen that I, I opened Kevin Collins' IV line. Why would they say you did it? They had this theory that I tampered with the IV so I could play the hero. You know, run in there, fix the mistake, and let Karen take the fall. Can you believe that? Well, it's not a stretch. What? Well, come on, Chris. I mean, from day one, you've come on like gangbusters. It's either the quarter main residency or death. I mean, frankly, it sounds like something you do. Excuse me, I have to go. I have an offer to decline. Now, Julie's going to want to know why, and I don't like to. You'd be crazy not to accept this job. You think so? This is a big break. Julie, have you asked yourself what I have done to merit it? I don't have to. I already know. You've worked so hard all your life. You worked your butt off to help your brother through med school. You're a football star. You're the most knowledgeable paramedic I've ever known. And you're the local hero who just pulled people from a burning building. Want me to list any more no, of your no, credits? No, no, That's enough. Then what's the problem? I don't want the job. Who's that? Dr. Devlin, Wait. how nice to see you. What a surprise. Way. Dr. Devlin, Scott. Dr. Devlin. Is he all right? Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, he's, he's fine, really. How really. long has he been like this? Well... How long have you been like this? Actually, just a couple of days. You know, I think it's the flu. You know, flu season seems to start it early, but you would know that being a doctor and all. You know, we really have to go. We have to get inside. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, uh, oh, hey, that. Hey. Go away. Hey, who am I? Who do you think you are? Listen, uh, you know, he's had a problem, basically, with names all his life. Uh, Dr. Devlin, have, have I thanked you, uh, recently for saving Kevin's life? He needs to be admitted. Yeah, oh, you're right. The sooner I, I get him in there, the better. You know, that that's what we're gonna do. It was so nice seeing you. Uh, uh, Miss Cole, Miss Cole. Your friend appears to be on drugs. If you knew this, this man at all, you would know he would never, ever touch drugs. Uh, Miss Coe, his pupils are dilated. He's not making any sense at all. I do recognize the symptoms. De Devlin. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. See? He's coming around. He's going to be just no, fine. No, 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 no. We need to get him examined immediately. Oh, we are doing nothing. Me and Lucy are going home. No, no, we aren't. We are going to go see Doc. Keep that appointment, remember? What? 
a house call. My doctor makes house calls. How unusual. Lucy, we gotta go to Serena. I know, I know. Who's Serena? Oh, uh, just the most amazing little girl in the whole wide world. Uh, he's in no condition to be around children. Uh, I know. Uh, look, I know what you think it is, what you just said, but it, it isn't that. A and I promise you it's not. You see, we're going to go see Kevin, who happens to be an excellent doctor, just like yourself. In fact, uh, Kevin has referred us to Dr. Alan Quartermain, who also is an excellent doctor. So as soon as we visit with Kevin, we're going to go see Dr. Alan Quartermain. Now, let's... I Dr. Devon, so much appreciate your involvement and your concern, but you don't have to involve yourself and concern yourself in our little dilemma here. But, you know, you showing that involvement and concern really helps, and it means you're a special, great doctor, and we appreciate it. We gotta go. At least, let me help you get him upstairs. Come on. Go away! No, uh, uh thank you. Uh, I got, I have this handled, a actually. Uh, I've got it, and thank you so much for your help. Good luck. Tom? Go, go. Kevin, if you tell anybody, I will slice you like this. Well? Well, what? No cartwheels, no leaps of joy. I thought you'd be happy and sticking around. Of course I am. But I don't, I don't get it. This sounds like such a dream job. Not for me. Yes, the offer is flattering, even tempting. I, Athletic director at a prestigious college, more money than I've ever made in my life. A, a beamer, for God's sake. But all of those things have to be weighed against what I would be leaving behind. Uh, I like my life as it stands. My work, my friends. I even like my mother. <laughs> She was here earlier. Yeah, giving you an earful, I'm sure. What was tonight's analogy? Does the name Louis Perrone mean anything to you? Oh, not him again. I, I could still wring his neck for opening his mouth at his bachelor party. Why? You did something wonderful for him. You probably changed his life. No, no, no. Let's keep this in perspective, okay? I invited a shy, misfit of a kid over to shoot a few hoops. And instilled a healthy dose of much-needed self-confidence in the process. Something he wasn't finding anywhere else, according to your mother. And now he's an executive in a major corporation? Maybe I should see if old Louie's got any openings. That's not what I mean, and you know it. Everybody should have his turn at bat, Frank. It's your turn now. There's only one problem. I am nowhere near ready, nor willing to give you up. Of course, you're going to take Joe and Karen's side. Well, it has less to do with loyalty than mathematics. It's the magic of three. Three what? One, I overheard you tell Dr. Burgess that you hoped Karen's screw up with the IV line wouldn't stick a fork in her career. Two, you want the quarter main prize so badly you'd probably kill for it. And three, you are the only one to profit from Karen's misfortune. I mean, with her out of the picture, you had a chance to assist Dr. Devlin in surgery, right? Chris, they're only accusing you because, well, it makes sense. I see. Well, why don't you figure this into your equation there, Einstein? Hmm. If I wanted to stab any of you in the back, do you think I'd be so obvious? Come on. You wouldn't even see it coming. I think he likes me. Just a smidge more than he fancies Joe and Karen, anyway. Hey, do you mind if I uh, give you a word of advice? <laughs> Would it stop you if I did? I know that you don't like to take sides. And I know that you believe every issue has its proper form. But I would strongly urge you to take the time to listen to what Karen and Joe have to say about what happened to Dr. Collins' IV that night. They seem to make a lot of sense. We think whomever adjusted your bed and your IV did so to discredit care. Why would anyone want to do that? Well, it's a jungle out there. Well, listen, I know the competition during an internship is fierce on a good day. 
but endangering a patient, isn't that a tad extreme? Well, we think the person meant to catch the mistake before you were at risk, and then they would be praised and I would be taken off surgical rotation. Exactly. But as it happened, I was the one who found out the IV was rigged. But the result was the same. Karen was discredited. He's right. Now, that's not to say that I think you made the mistake. What does Dr. Burgess say? Well, I tried to tell her my side of the story, but she wouldn't hear me out. She said it was neither the time nor the place. Who have you told? The person we suspect. Yeah, but Dr. Burgess walked right in on the middle of it, and she read us the riot act. <laughs> it being the confrontation of sorts. The loud sort, which is probably why she wasn't willing to listen to us. The louder you scream, the less people hear. And the more at fault I seem. Exactly. Listen, when you meet with Dr. Burgess, don't play the blame game. Take the high road at least until you know where the fault lies and do it quietly. I can do that. Well, thanks for your help. We're sorry if we bothered you. Like I said, anything I can do. Um, actually, since you mentioned it, can you tell Dr. Burgess what you saw? The figure in black? Sure, I just hope it helps. taking the time to hear me out. Well, thank Dr. Harmer, and he suggested I'd be interested in what you had to say. Karen, what was your emotional state the evening Kevin Collins went into surgery? I was tired. I lost a patient on my first. And I did hear some disturbing news from my husband, but I'm sure you've heard all of this through Chris Ramsey. Is there anything that you'd like to add? I shouldn't have accused Chris of setting me up. That was wrong. Then why did you? I acted out of emotion. Whether I blamed him because he went through my mail is immaterial. I was wrong. But Joe and I made a discovery about that night. Kevin Collins witnessed something out of the ordinary in his room prior to surgery. He was suffering from severe head trauma. I wouldn't be surprised if he saw flying monkeys. Yeah, but it can't hurt to at least listen to him. He wants to help. I'll speak to him. Well, this is great. And if Kevin has the missing piece to the puzzle, he can show that neither Karen nor Chris had anything to do with Dr. Collins' IV line being open that night. We can go back to being one big happy family. <sighs> oh, great. Let me guess. Another meeting of the Conspiracy Theories Club, huh? When you first told me about the job in Chicago, I was so happy for you. Then the doubts started to creep in. Why are you talking? What kind of doubts? The nasty, nagging kind. Like whether or not we could survive the separation. Now, is this the part where I say, oh, ye of little faith? No, because I came to the conclusion that we could. Not that it would be easy. The thought of you 700 miles away makes my heart want to break. But putting the time into our respective careers, no matter where they might take us, is like making a deposit into our future. In order for us to be the best we can be together, we have to realize our individual potential. Otherwise, we both get cheated. That's why I don't want to be the reason you turn this job down. I'll still be here no matter what. I know. And if the situation were reversed, the same would hold true for me. But I, I want you to let yourself off the hook right now. I am saying no to this job because of me. Because what I need from my life right now. Yes, that includes having you in the same general vicinity. But 
By the same token, it doesn't mean that I would unilaterally turn down jobs that would take me away. I agree with what you say about realizing our individual potential, making us stronger, but Julie Colson College is not that opportunity. So, I guess you're stuck with me. Hallelujah. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, stop this, stop this. Oh, you must be feeling better getting back to your old crotchety self. Oh. Help me up. Okay, that's an improvement, asking for help. There you go, pal, there you go. Uh, Wait a minute, where are you going? You don't even know where he went. God, think. And if he sees you again, he'll probably call the police. You're not exactly looking your best here. Oh, see, he thinks I'm on drugs. I know, but I I'll, I'll tell him you're okay. And, and Kevin will tell him as soon as we get you upstairs. That's where we're going. Come on. Oh. What? what? Oh. Oh, boy. Scott, don't, don't do that, okay? Please don't. It'll pass. I'll be okay. Okay. Now, listen. You promised me if you had a relapse, you would go in the hospital. See, what if I had a relapse in front of, of a whole room full of doctors? Well, if you're sick, wouldn't that be the point you need to be in front of doctors? I don't want anybody to see me like this. Would you stop being so stubborn and let me help you? Come on. Okay. You can help me. You can uh, drive me. Drive me home. After we go in and see Kevin. You know, I... I have a strange feeling. Something's wrong. Something is wrong with all of this. I don't know what to do for you, pal. Take me to the lighthouse. Let's let's find out what's wrong, okay? Take me home. I can't because if you were to die on me, Scott Baldwin, I, I would never forgive you. I'd never speak to you ever again. Please, please, please. Just take me home. Take me home. Okay, listen to me. I will. I will take you wherever you want to go after we go in that door and see Kevin. Now. Scott. Oh, my God. Scott? Scott? Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go get help, okay? I, I, I'm going to go try and, and find Karen or, or, or somebody. Just, I'll be right back. I, I promise. Don't move. I was in the neighborhood. I'll take that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> did you hear the latest news about Frank's job offer? I did, and congratulations. It's a remarkable opportunity. Try convincing him of that. Well, you know, you don't want to make too hasty a decision. You might wind up with your back against a wall. Well, I've considered all the factors, and you've reached a decision. I'm declining the offer. Uh, in any case, thanks for recommending me, Ben. You recommended Frank? Oh, Dr. Ramsey, please. There's no one conspiring against you. Oh, don't mind me. I'll be out of your way in just a couple seconds. See, I have a job to perform in this hospital. Although I can see how nice it must be to spend one's time gossiping.
Yes, Byron. Rex Stanton here. I've just witnessed the most disturbing incident concerning Scott Baldwin. And as my lawyer, I thought you should be the first to know. Tomorrow, we're used to the tool man blowing things up, but this week he's trying something new, pumping up. Tim the Tool Man Taylor is now a personal trainer. It's an all-new home improvement, followed by an all-new Hiller and Diller, the show the critics are calling one smartly written comedy. ABC Tuesday. Watch what happens when Laura's secret is blown wide open on All My Children Today. <laughs>